Howdy, and welcome to Bamberger Ranch. My name is Roel Lopez. I'm the director of the Texas A&M Natural Resources Institute, and we're going to continue our Leopold Live series here at Bamberger, continuing to talk about the five basic tools introduced by Aldo Leopold, the father of wildlife management. These five tools include cow, axe, plow, uh, fire, and gun. And what we hope to do in the upcoming months is show you how those tools can be applied, but with very specific projects and objectives. And so with me is Dr. April Sampson. She's the executive director of Bamberger, and she's going to tell us a little bit about Bamberger and what we hope to cover in the series. Great. Thank you so much, Roel. We're really excited to have you and your colleagues from the Natural Resources Institute back here at Sela Bamberger Ranch Preserve. And we're excited about continuing our journey into Leopold Live version two. Like Roel said, we'll be uh, providing more detail and more useful information regarding the five tools that Aldo Leopold championed. Here at Sela Bamberger Ranch Preserve, we're a 501c3 nonprofit organization, and our mission is landowner stewardship, outreach, and environmental education. So we have uh, many Central Texas school children that come visit us every year uh, for hands-on science-based environmental education lessons, and we also lead uh, showcase tours and workshops for landowners interested in practicing restoration and good land stewardship. Um, so we're very happy to be partnering with Natural Resources Institute um, and we hope that we know that you'll benefit a lot from the information that we are going to be um, talking about during this new version of Leopold Live. So let's go ahead and get started. Great. Good morning, welcome to another segment of Leopold Live. Uh, today, our subject that you can see behind us um, is about feral hogs uh, and, and management of, of the, that invasive exotic species. Um, it, it's a kind of a blustery cold morning, so forgive the, the, forgive the, the shiver or the teeth chatter. Um, but uh, feral hogs, they're a big problem. Uh, I get a lot, I get the, one of the most common questions I get from people that visit us is, do you have hogs? And are they a problem? And I say, yes, anytime you have hogs on your property, they are a problem. Um, they're, the last time there was a survey done by Texas Parks and Wildlife about the population of feral hogs in Texas, and you, I will, feral hogs, wild pigs, it's all the same thing. That's one thing to get out of the way right now. Um, but uh, yeah, the last survey that was done, uh, uh, kind of an all-inclusive survey was done in 2016, and the estimated population was 2.6 million hogs in Texas. That's a lot of oinkers. Um, and the estimated, the estimated uh, cost and damage agriculturally uh, was over $1 billion annually. I would imagine since that survey was done seven years ago that our population is greater and, and therefore the, the damage, the cost and damage is, is also greater. So when we talk about damage uh, from, from this uh, invasive exotic, exotic species, uh, definitely in areas where you have crops, um, especially corn, uh, they can, a farmer can go in and, and seed, a, seed a field in corn and overnight acres of that corn can be eaten by, by wild pigs or feral hogs. Um, but also uh, because they are rooting up the soil here in the hill country, it's not so much the, the croplands because we don't have the soil to, to grow crops, uh, but here it's uh, what soil we do have, and especially in our riparian zones or around our, our sources of water, um, they will root up the soil. Um, they are omnivores, so they're, they're looking for plant matter. They're also looking for bugs, um, they're looking for snakes, anything that they actually get their mouth on, they will eat. Um, but that rooting of the soil uh, causes disturbance, which can lead to erosion, but also can lead to an increase in, in invasive plants that love that disturbance. Um, so, and then they are definitely attracted to water. Uh, that's one reason why I have this trap set up here, because um, just off screen, there is, a, there is a, a stock tank that does have water in it, even, in, even though we're in a severe drought. 
um, especially during a severe drought where your water, water resources are limited, um, they will, there'll be a higher concentration of, of wild pigs in and around that water source. So they get in that water source, especially in the summer, to, to stay cool. The pigs don't sweat. Um, so to stay cool, they'll, they'll wallow in the mud. Um, that also helps with uh, uh, skin parasites, fleas, uh, ticks, uh, uh, feral lice or swine lice, uh, things of that nature too. But, <laughs> and that's, that's, that's a big problem um, because if they're wallowing and rooting around in that riparian zone, those are the areas where erosion uh, is, is, could, be, could be the worst. So that potential for erosion in those areas, um, those areas that are the most diverse areas that we have um, as far as wildlife and plants, uh, it's just not a good thing. Um, also, while they're wallowing around in that mud, in that water, they're also defecating and urinating. Uh, so they're, they're one of the highest sources of fecal coliform in our Texas water comes from feral hogs. Uh, so, so not only damaging the soil, but they're, they are contaminating our water sources as well. Um, so as far as management of hogs, uh, we, won't, we won't ever reach that goal of, of, get, of eradicating them from the, from the ranch or from the Texas hill country or from Texas in general. They're here to stay. Um, part of that reason is, is because of their expos explosive population growth during good times. Uh, if we have an average year or, or, or a, a better than average year, uh, each, one, each one of these sow pigs, these female pigs, uh, will, give it, will have at least two litters in that year and will we'll usually survive on average about five, uh, five piglets per litter. So on an average year, each sow is, is increasing the population by a power of 10. On a real good year, and if, and if, they, if their pregnancies are timed just right, they could have three litters a year and up to 12 piglets. So the better the year, the more, the more rainfall we get, the more there is to eat, the more those, those piglets are gonna to survive to, to weaning age and adult age, and therefore you'll have more pigs. Um, we the silver lining to having a severe drought that we've had for the last year and a half is our pig numbers here on the ranch are way down. But we've had a little rain this spring. So even though our adult pig numbers are down, every time I see a sow, she's followed up by eight or 10 piglets because there's fewer pigs out there. And now the resource is kind of rebounding from the drought. Hopefully we're gonna rebound further. Um, that means that population is gonna explode and we'll, we'll be back to those high levels or even higher than we were before the drought. Methods that we use to, to manage the populations or try to, get, try to eradicate the pigs here on the ranch, um, hunting them, definitely. Um, now, in Texas, on private land, you can hunt pigs without a hunting license. That includes non-resident people. So people outside the state of Texas can hunt pigs on private land without a hunting license. Now, if it's on public land, you gotta have you have to have a hunting license. There's a there's a few other discrepancies there too, but that is that is our Texas Parks and Wildlife and our in our legislature recognizing the huge problem that the pigs are and making it easier for more people to come and harvest those animals. Um, so hunting is a big is one one of the big ways that we we get the we get the hogs off the property um, and if it's a nice fat pig they do eat very well you put them on the barbecue pit smoke them or put them on a smoker that's the best way put them on a smoker about eight hours oh my goodness uh, it's fantastic um, so hunting them um, now I've, I've been told that you know shooting them out of a helicopter is not really hunting them um, but that is one way that, other, that others have chosen to go about that because we're a nature, uh, nature preserve here. Uh, we choose not to have that, that disruption of a helicopter flying around the property. Um, snaring is another way uh, that people can trap them. Now, when it comes to uh, tra trapping and snaring, you do have to have a license, uh, a hunting license that is. Um, we choose not to snare because snares are, can be, uh, you can, you can ca capture non-target animals in those snares. Um, and really with a snare you catch one pig so when i'm when i'm trapping and I'll, I'll get further into the into the details of that in just a moment when i'm trapping i'm i'm trying to trap out an entire sounder 
or at least a, the biggest part of a sounder. And a sounder is a group of pigs. It's usually a family group of, th of four to five sows, um, maybe a boar hog with them, and a bunch of, bunch of young ones, a bunch of juveniles. Um, so hunting, um, whether it's you know, from a hunting blind over, over a, a, a corn bait, a, a deer feeder basically, um, or a helicopter, or at night with, with night vision optics, these are all legal means of harvesting wild pigs. Again, they are an exotic species. So there, there's, there's not really, uh, if, it, if it's legal to own that firearm, and, 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 and even hunt at night, you can do that with pigs. Now, you can't do that with our other native game, <laughs> but for pigs you can. Um, so there's, there's multiple ways you can hunt them. Uh, trapping them uh, also, again, is a, is a very effective tool. Um, and we'll, we'll be going over a couple different styles of traps. Um, there also is in the works, and it's been in the works for a while, and hopefully one day before I'm uh, too old to, to do anything about it, uh, the Texas Parks and Wildlife has been developing um, with, uh, with other cooperatives that have been developing a, a basically a poison bait. It's sodium nitrate um, or nitrite. It's a, it, in, so and it, it, it works to, it basically poisons the pigs. Um, so what they're working on now is, is how to deliver that in the, uh, enough quantities in the, in the bait uh, to, to actually dispatch the hog humanely or quickly. Uh, and also without, without harming uh, non-target animals. Um, for example, raccoons. If a pig can eat it, a raccoon can eat it too. <laughs> so uh, we don't want to kill the, the, the funny little uh, ringtail bandits. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> so there are options for landowners uh, to control wild pig populations. So now uh, transitioning to, to trapping, um, what you'll see behind me is, is a, it's, a, it's a large box trap. Um, they do make them quite a bit smaller that can slide in the, be, in the bed of a pickup truck and they are a lot, a lot easier to move than this one. Um, this one I have it, have it set up with an axle on the back, if you can see it from here, um, where I can jack it up, mount two tires. I got a hitch that's kind of up on top of the trap that I pull off of there, attached to the front. It hooks up to a two inch ball. Um, I jack it up, hook my truck up to it. Uh, and I'm going to haul it anywhere on the ranch where I want to, then jack it back down and fill the feeder. I have a, a 50 pound, it's a tailgate feeder, but I've kind of retroed it to where it work, work, also works off of a timer and a 12 volt battery, just like a deer feeder, um, which it'll hold about enough corn for about a, about a week. Um, so I don't have to come every day and bait the trap. Um, uh, so making it a little easier on the maintenance for that or uh, upkeep of the trap. Um, I, for this trap, I have, uh, it's basically a guillotine door, so basically a, a door that slides up and then slides down. Uh, it's tripped, at this moment in time, it's tripped with a, with a cable. So, and I, and I call it a trip cable, but it's not, it's not, I don't set it up to where they trip over with their legs. I set it up where they, and they go, oh, they go under it, it pushes the cable up, which then trips the mechanism on the door, and the door goes down. Um, I do that because um, when you have when you have a sounder of hogs moving around um, and they come coming to bait, it's usually the little guys that show up first. Uh, the sow, the sows, and the boar, the big boar hogs. They they've been around enough to be smart enough that hey, let's send those guys out there and see if see if the coast is clear, and then we'll go out there. <laughs> At least that's the way I, I might be anthropomorphizing a little bit, but uh, that's, that's the way I, I see it happening. Uh, but it's usually the little hogs that go in there first. And if, you, if, the, if the cable trips with the little pig, you're not going to catch the big ones. So again, the, the trick is to try to get as much of that sounder in that trap as you can at one time. The, the most I've had in this trap, which is 16 foot long uh, and about six foot wide, um, I had 14 pigs in it at one time. It was pretty full. I also I used to have a corral trap set up right here in the same area, and I caught 26 in, in one trap, in one in one door, one door tripping. Um, so it works. It works. And there's all kinds of techniques about how to trigger the door. Uh, they even have the they even have where you can trigger it with your cell phone. It's kind of expensive, that's why I don't have it. <laughs> but uh, you, instead of having a trip cable, you can have the cable, you can have the cable tied to a, to a big rock. 
uh, to where if they if they if they root the big rock and the bigger the rock, the bigger the hog it takes to to, to move that rock. But if they move that rock uh, by rooting around with their nose, um, it trips a, trips a door or a big tire or or just there's all kinds of ways. But basically, any way you can think of uh, to to ensure that it's a big hog that sets a trap off. Usually, if you catch a big hog, you're going to catch the little ones too. They'll be in there. Um, so also, and you can kind of see, from, kind of see in the background, I have a, uh, <laughs> I do have a remote activation on my door, um, but I use a rifle. <laughs> so on the on the door, the door, the mechanism that trips the door, I have I have welded a uh, uh, a quarter inch thick steel plate, painted it white, where I can sit off at a distance with my with my night vision scope on my 22 Magnum or my little uh, 17. HMR 17 and I can see if the pigs are in the trap and when they when they're going in the trap or most of them go in the trap then I can shoot that strike plate and down goes the door it's kind of fun actually it's it's combining hunting and trapping so for outdoorsmen like me it's the more you can do that the funner it is um, so um, uh, let's see about baiting the trap, um, there's all kinds of baits. You can, you can sour the corn. I choose not to mess with that that nasty soured corn. I did that for a while. Uh, I couldn't see where it, it was any better for me. Um, I just use corn um, throughout the hunting season. They're already accustomed to coming to deer feeders that's just spilling out just corn, just plain corn. Um, so they, 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 they know that it's a food source. Um, it might take a few days for them to start coming in there. I use this, I, ha, I will have a camera set up on the traps, um, just a motion activated, just a game, a game trail camera. Um, that way I will know when it's just pigs coming in. Because if you're using just corn, you're gonna get deer coming in. And I don't wanna catch deer. If you catch deer, uh, chances are it's gonna kill them because they will beat themselves to death on the, on the cage, the wire cage. Um, so I don't catch deer I, 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 over the, a uh, dozen years that I've been trapping hogs here on the ranch, I've caught two deer. And one of them did perish, uh, but the other one I was able to release without it being harmed more than a few scratches and bruises. Um, so don't want to catch deer. Um, so when it, whenever, the, whenever the pigs start coming in regularly, the deer don't come in there. They don't like to mix. Um, and if I do have an instance where I have deer coming in there, you know, in the evening, in the daylight hours, uh, feeding on a little bit of corn and the pigs are coming in later. Um, I won't set the trip cable. I will use my rifle to set it off remotely. That way I know that there's not deer in there and it's just pigs. Uh, so the goal is to catch the pigs. Now what do you do after you catch them? <laughs> well there's a couple things you can do. Uh, you can shoot them uh, for for all for all, the entire time I've been trapping pigs here on the ranch. Uh, it's kind of like the Bluebell commercials. We eat all we can and sell the rest. Uh, uh, and I did sell pigs for a long time. Now that's not something you can just sell to anybody. And there's a, there's a lot of regulations as to how long you can keep those pigs in, in captivity. Um, I, I believe it's seven days last I read that you can actually keep the hog in captivity without taking it to a, 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 a Texas Animal Health Control um, permitted uh, buying station where they actually buy the wild pigs or to a permitted ranch where they where they release them for game hunting, for, for wild game hunting. Um, um, or you can kill them. You can kill them and eat them. Um, when the prices are good for selling those pigs, if it's if it's better than 30 cents a pound, yeah, I'm gonna sell them. Because uh, it, I will m a little bit more than break even as far as the time and the transportation of, of getting, those, getting those pigs to that facility. Um, but for a, couple, for a few years now, the prices have been way down, so it's not worth my while. It's not worth my while. Uh, it'll cost more in transportation fees and in my time to take them to a proof facility. But we do we do uh, we do actually eat the eat the pigs that are that are nice and fat. Um, now I'm pretty picky about that. Um, but I have a lot of people that call me up and, and, and they want a pig um, and as long as you're giving it to them, it's perfectly legal to do so. Uh, you can't sell it to an individual that wants to eat it. Um, you can't sell it as, as meat, you can't sell it as in live form in that condition, but you can give it away. Um, 
so that, that's kind of your options. Um, you can eat it yourself, feed yourself, feed your neighbors, um, feed your vultures and your other scavengers, or take it off the cell. Uh, so you also see behind me um, uh, what I call my catch trailer. Um, it's simply, uh, sim simply put, it's how I, how I can get the hogs out of the trap without me having to handle them. Um, they are wild animals, they will bite. So my, my catch trailer is just a small trailer, it's basically, basically a cage on wheels. Um, what, I, what you will see also is uh, I have a chute, a loading chute that I can raise and lower. Um, so back up, the hardest thing with that is, is getting squ square with the trap so there's no gap for the pigs to get out. <laughs> it takes a little finagling. Um, but uh, yeah, it's pretty easy, pretty easy to use. I'll, I'll back the trailer up to it, lower the, lower the chute. Uh, open the trap door, go to the other end of the trap. The pigs will, will run away from you usually. Uh, sometimes the big boar hogs will try to fight you through the cage, so it takes a little longer. Um, and then it'll, it'll run the trailer. I'll close the doors on the trailer, close the door on the trap, and, and you know, uh, got, the, got the tiger by the tail then. Take them off to a, sell, a facility to sell them or, or you know, shoot them in the trailer or heart, and you know, kill, them, kill them out of the trailer and, and process them up and have a, have a good barbecue. Uh, what I do not do is I do not shoot the pigs in the trap. I have found that if you shoot them in the trap, now this is just my experience, if you shoot them in the trap, it takes a while for you to get more pigs to come back to that trap, that trap location. Okay, here we are at another location uh, where I have a little bit different style of a, of a trap for, for feral pig control. Um, this is more of a what would be called a corral trap, uh, about 30 foot diameter. It does not have a top. Therefore, uh, the wire is quite a bit taller. Um, I have seen pigs actually jump out of a, just a single 52 inch tall cattle panel. I've seen them jump out, jump out of the top of that. So uh, w one time that happening was enough. <laughs> now the problem with that is that this one's uh, about seven and a half feet tall now. Um, the problem with that is it's very difficult for deer to jump out. So again, uh, with all my hog traps, I will put a camera on the, on the trap uh, to see what's coming in there. And when it's just hogs, which is usually the case when, when the hogs move in and find it, um, when it's just hogs, that's when I'll go ahead and take the wire off of the door um, and set the cable like I want it. Uh, so it, it's tripped by the big hogs and I, ca I catch hogs and then we start the process over again. Um, uh, a little closer look, since I don't have any pigs in this trap at the moment, a little closer look at the uh, the guillotine type door. Um, in this one, since it's a big trap and my big corral traps, I like to I like to build a wing, um, so right that comes to the door. That way, when the pigs are, are running in a circle and you're trying to get them to go out the door, it's a circle. They have a hard time finding the opening. Uh, but if you put a make a make a corner in that, then they'll run into the corner. Uh, if it's on the right side of the corner, and then they'll go right go right out the door. And into the trailer. Uh, at times, sometimes, at times, I will have a, a kind of a difficult. I'll have a difficult pig in there, one that's being very difficult and doesn't really want to go in the trailer. Um, it, in those times, when, I, when I, if I take about 15 minutes and I still don't have the pig loaded up, I will uh, just leave the trailer there. I'll clo close the trap door back again, leave the trailer there, come come back at night, um, and I'll put a flashlight where it's shining into the trailer. Um, open the trap door and usually pretty quick they they go towards the light because they are uh, they are more uh, more of a diurnal species than a nocturnal species um, so that's that's uh, makes it a little easier to get them loaded up um, so a, tra a trap like this this is a trap just just like this is the one I've, I've, I've caught as much as 26 pigs in it one time so that that's pretty much an entire sounder um, there's been other people, other folks that I've talked to that have trapped more at one trap time. Um, that's just my record so far. Just to keep a little track. Um, uh, I had a question from the audience um, uh, at the at the last the last area that we were, we we're filming from um, about uh, donating the meat from the pigs or donating the pigs. Um, and th again, that's very that's very legal. Um, there's nothing nothing wrong with that. Um, so at some places that that you can donate that meat to um, they may require 
uh, a fee um, for the basic processing of that animal. Um, other places may not. So it depends on, on what your finances are personally as to how, how you can uh, provide that meat to, the, to, the, to your neighbors or, or to the community in general. It's difficult to uh, survey your, your pig population just to know how many is on your property. Um, a, lot of, a lot of the reason why that is difficult is um, as, a, as a herd animal, you're either going to see the herd or you're not. Um, or I, you'll see the sounder, I mean. Um, but also, fences are, are not really, it's very difficult to build a fence to keep hogs out or to keep hogs in. Um, they, can, they can get through high fencing, um, they can get through low fencing, they can get through net wire fencing, they can get through barbed wire fencing. Um, if, they can, if they can get enough room to get their nose under that wire, they will push, and they're very strong, They'll push and they'll, they'll claw with their hooves until they get enough space to where they can slip right under that wire. Um, I've seen it happen. So it doesn't take but a few inches of a gap on, at the bottom of your fence to have hogs develop a trail where they're going right under it. Um, but I, I, I know from just uh, from how many hogs I've, I've I harvest a year off the property, um, and how many how many of the hogs the, the our hunters see when they're when they're out hunting? I, I would I would my estimation is here on the property was 5,500 acres. We probably have somewhere between three and 500 pigs annually. That's going to depend on drought year. On a drought year, you're going to have fewer. A good year, you're going to have more. Um, but uh, and I know that if I if I can harvest 200 pigs a year, that will maintain the population. <laughs> That's not really going to decrease the population because of all the factors we talked about earlier about how, how they can ex explosively, uh, their numbers can be explosive as far as the population growth. So it is really the best thing to do uh, whether you own five acres or you own f 5,000 acres. Um, if there's pigs in, in, pigs in your neighborhood the best thing to do is try to try to control those populations as best you can. So there are there are those methods out there. I've showed I've shown you a few today, um, but as far as wildlife management, it's one of the top things you can do um, for your wildlife valuation. Um, it does it does apply towards that predator control uh, portion of, of your wildlife valuation. So uh, accomplishing this task will help you with that valuation.